Hello everybody. <clears throat> okay, so I wanted to make a quick video to talk about um, graphic settings and options for uh, Pimax in iRacing. Um, I've had some questions and messages and uh, correspondence with a few people recently where some people are saying that you can't really run the Pimax in the wide field of view with satisfactory options um, and maintaining 90 hertz, but it seems to work for me. So I wanted to share what I was doing um, and like that. So. What we're looking at right now is a replay of a recent race that I did in IMSA, um, which was a pretty big field. And usually for me, uh, the closed cockpit cars and big grids are, if I'm going to have a problem, uh, that's where it happens. But if we zoom in on the frame rate display. I tried to, it's hard with the way the quality and stuff works in the, my capture card, um, but it's right now oscillating um, between 89 and 90. Um, and what we're looking at really is just this very small um, part here, the steam display. So what we're seeing in the um, screen capture or in the uh, stream video is not representative of the quality that looks like in the headset. Um, it's just the way it's coming through on the desktop and then being filtered through um, OBS and everything. So um, my PC is a... Uh, a little bit older, uh, 770K, the stock speed is 4.2 gigahertz, but I have it gently overclocked to um, five gigahertz, and we're running a um, 2080 Ti. It's the cheapest 2080 Ti I could get. Uh, it's the EVGA one um, that's just $990, I think. Um, it's the original reference design that just has the one fan, uh, but I've never had any stability issues or um, overheating or anything like that. Um, most of the time it's between 75 and 85% uh, when I'm running an iRacing. And my CPU, um, I've tested it with Prime 95 and stuff a bunch and never had any stability concerns or blue screens uh, that I believe are coming from the overclock. So both of those seem good. Um, as far as the settings and everything, uh, it's easier to look at screenshots rather than trying to get it to be legible in the VR. Um, so in the iRacing graphics options, uh, the single pass stereo is absolutely necessary. And with the 2080 Ti, you can turn off the parallel projections and the combination of those two together seems to be pretty important. Um, and the rest of the performance options, um, I'd have sky and cloud set at high because I don't like the chunky update. Um, for the clouds and the shadows and stuff. Um, cars, I have at high detail because I want to see them in the distance. Um, I used to run with the cars at low detail and then bump up or um, change the LOD scale percent to make them show up in the distance, but it seems like that also has other things um, that get drawn in that make it more expensive. So in the way I've been running recently, I just have the LOD scale percent set at the default and bumped the detail on the cars up to high, and that seems satisfactory. Um, Pit objects, event, grandstands, I don't really care about, so I have them at low, um, and the crowds I don't care about at all, so I have them off. Um, objects I have at high detail because there are some off-track geometry things that I use for brake marker and just general um, visuals around the track that I prefer, um, and particles at high and full res and soft. Um, obviously the... Um, uh, Frame rate has no limit and stuff. Oh, the um, the max cars I do have set to 63, um, and that's because I use the digital race engineer uh, as a text to speech um, voice attack plugin set um, that really helps. But it needs the uh, max cars set at 63 so that it gets all the data about everybody in the field. Um, there was a time when that was causing me some grief, um, but right now and these days, that doesn't seem to be a problem running with 63. Um, the max pre-rendered frames I have set at one here in iRacing, and I have the um, NVIDIA setting to respect the application value. So there seems to be some debate as to whether this max pre-rendered frames is for VR or for the general rendering. Um, I think it does control the VR um, pre-rendered frames, but in my case, I have it set at one anyway. The anisotropic filtering is 16x and the AA um, is at 4x. I would prefer to run the AA at 8x um, and for all the open wheel cars that I drive, that's fine and it still maintains frame rate. Um, but if I get in a closed cockpit like the Ferrari 488, for whatever reason, that seems to kill the NIA thing at eight and I suffer a CPU hit um, that takes me out of um, 90 frames. So I've ended up just running it at 4x all the time and it looks good enough. 
Um, so I have the render dynamic track data and render dynamic tire data enabled, uh, shadow maps on everything, objects shelf shadowing, but not the dynamic objects. Um, I haven't done any races at night, so I don't really have any experience with this stuff, and I think it's all the defaults anyway as far as the shadow maps and that sort of thing. Uh, dynamic cube maps and fixed cube maps at zero, obviously. Uh, shader quality at high. Um, I run with just the steering wheel um, because if my real arms do anything different or I let go of the steering wheel and the virtual arms don't do the same thing, it freaks me out and makes me uncomfortable. So <laughs> I just run with the steering wheel. Um, two pass trees is actually important to me. I know there's a lot of people who say that it makes no difference and it's just a frame rate cost, um, but there are trees. Um, a good example is if you're in the pits at Watkins Glen, there's a tree down at the end of T1 um, that looks like crap if the two pass trees are disabled. Um, but with two pass trees enabled, it looks a little bit less like crap. Um, so I run with those on. Uh, four cockpit mirrors, headlights on low detail. Um, I do run with the virtual mirror um, because I need it to avoid collisions. Uh, there's lots of people that say that you should run without it in VR because it kills the immersion, but the times I've tried to do that, I collide with other vehicles, so I run with it, and I think 120 is the default. Um, sharpening is enabled, and I think I have it bumped up in the INI file to be 150 um, as the actual sharpening value. Uh, 2048 by 2048 car textures. Um, I have bumped up the um, GPU and uh, system memory to 8192. I know there's debate about whether it's a 32-bit value and can actually go above um, 4096, but it seems like my current CP or general system memory is above that anyway. So um, yeah, those are always a little bit of a mystery. So that's the graphic settings. Some people seem to think that your replay settings also affect uh, what performance you get in the game. So I have mine set to be identical um, in everything that's exposed to what the graphic settings are, with the exception of the show driver arms. I have that enabled for the replay, but it's not enabled for the regular. So everything else, I believe, is identical as far as these settings. In the um, eye tool, um, I have uh, smooth, smart smoothing turned off, fixed fovea rendering turned off. Um, it is not set to be compatible with parallel projections, and that in combination with the iRacing single pass stereo seems to be the best performance combination on a 20 series card. Um, I do have the large field of view and 90 hertz and the render quality at the default of one. Those are the settings that seem pertinent in iTool. In Steam VR, I'm running at 100% um, in the application resolution. Um, the Steam VR wants me to run lower. Um, I think it's like 70 something that it recommends is the value. Um, but running it at 100% seems like it does still make frame rate. Um, and in the NVIDIA settings, I did experiment with some of these uh, based on forum posts and stuff, but I'm pretty confident what is running here now is all the defaults. So one screenshot is the top in the scroll bar and the other is the bottom so we can see all the settings. Um, like I said, I'm pretty confident everything here is the defaults. Um, virtual reality pre-rendered frames is set to respect the application setting, which I do believe is the value that we see in the iRacing graphic options. So like that, um, the iRacing renderer INI file, uh, this is the OpenVR section. Um, I do have the prediction mode set at zero and I do have the resolution scale percent set to 100. So resolution scale set to 100 in iRacing, iTool quality set to one, and the Steam VR um, application resolution set to 100% um, seems to be good enough and still my frame rate. So I think those are all the pertinent settings. Um, like I said, my CPU is a 770K at five gigahertz and the um, GPU is a 2080 Ti. Um, it was floored here because if you let the headset sit for a long time, it goes to sleep and it's not using the same um, rendering. But um, yeah, when it's running, it runs just under uh, the threshold in the GPU, and the CPU seems to be satisfactory for um, hitting 90 hertz. So your mileage may vary, uh, but these are the values and stuff that I'm running. Like I said, there is a little bit of variation, whether it's an open cockpit or a closed cockpit car. And Tsukuba is the one track that I've driven recently in week 13 in the 
um, Formula 3. I did have to adjust some settings down there because there were some turns that I did drop into the 80 um, FPS range. So, but for the most part, all the cars and tracks in the series that I run um, seem like it's a pretty consistent, solid 90 hertz across the board. So, thanks for watching. Take care. Drive safe, and I'll see you later. Good girl. End stream. Ending stream. Please remain calm.